Occasionally when we're trying to simplify a rational expression, uh, we'll get these two different factors that are what we call opposites of each other. And so here's what that means. One factor, is, let's say, is a minus b, and the opposite of that factor would be b minus a. So if you have a minus b over b minus a, are those the same? Can we cancel those? Like what, what happens? Well, it turns out you can't. You actually can reduce those, but it'll also always reduce to the number negative one. So they don't exactly just cancel; they actually leave a negative one. And it's pretty clear why this happens. You know, if you tried a number example, it would make it clear. If you had like seven minus two divided by two minus seven, well, seven minus two is five, and two minus seven is negative five, of course. So whenever you subtract the two, you're always going to get the same number, except one will be positive and the other will be negative. So they'll always cancel, but you'll always still have this negative that's left over, in which case that, that means you'd have a negative one you know, when it's left over. So let, let's take a look at an example and uh, see, if we can, see if we can do this here. All right, so let's say we had x squared minus 49 divided by seven minus x. It's a rational expression. It looks like that numerator is gonna factor because it looks like a difference of squares. So we'd have x plus seven times x minus seven, all divided by seven minus x. And obviously the two that I'm looking at are these two right here because the, the factors aren't exactly the same. One's x minus seven and one's seven minus x, but they are what we call opposites, if you remember from, from just before. So we actually can cancel these, but we're here. this is very important. What we're gonna do is we're gonna leave an extra negative after we cancel them. So the final answer would be negative parentheses x plus seven. So opposites can cancel each other, but it'll leave a negative one in its place. All right, so this would be your final answer. All right, let's take a look at another popular situation kind of related to opposites. Uh, sometimes your factors will be a plus b over b plus a, and students, based off of what we just said, will often think this will be negative one as well because they're in reverse order. But in fact, that's not the case a plus b divided by b plus a will actually just be positive one. Now why? Well addition, if you recall, is what we call commutative. It means the order doesn't matter. One plus two is three, and three, two plus one is three. So the order doesn't, doesn't really matter. This b plus a, you could just as easily write that as a plus b, and then they would cancel. So these just flat out cancel. No negative one, no, no anything like that. All right, so let's try an example here. Um, here we have x squared plus 2x minus 8 divided by 16 minus x squared. So the numerator factors as, let's see, x plus 4 and x minus 2. And the denominator is a difference of squares. That would be 4 plus x times 4 minus x. All right, and, and obviously the two that I'm looking at are these two right here. So I've got an x plus four and a four plus x. So what do we do? do? Do these just cancel? Do we get a negative one? What happens? Well, since this is plus instead of minus, these are actually just identically the same and we can cancel these two guys and we're done. So our final result would be x minus two divided by four minus x. So again, just remember if you have opposites in the numerator and denominator, you can cancel them and leave a negative one. But if it's a plus b over b plus a, those aren't exactly opposites. Those are in fact the same thing. They'll cancel and leave you with a positive one.